Hello and welcome to Insights IS. Let's start our discussion that is the 40 Swiss year global social mobility index. Every year UPS is asking one to three uh, kind of indexes or reports. So in that sense it is important. So this global social mobility index is released by World Economic Forum and which is located in Cologne, uh, Switzerland. Uh, remember that this Cologne is a small municipality in the cantonment of uh, Geneva, Switzerland. So World Economic Forum is located there. And this Global Social Mobility Index is a first ever global social mobility report. In that sense, let's, un uh, let's understand what is social mobility. Social mobility is the mobility uh, from lower hierarchy to higher hierarchy. It may be financial, it may be job related, it may be uh, other social aspect as well. For example, suppose now you are students. After one year of preparation, you may become IAS or IPS or IRS. So then your social mobility would be there. You would get lots of prestige and uh, some go a good handsome salary and uh, uh, many responsibility role and you can say resources. In that sense, your social mobility would be there. So in the, that is the index uh, which is prepared. Only a handful of nations have put in place the right conditions to promote social mobility. Absolute social mobility is the ability of a child to experience a better life than their parents. So while relative social mobility is an assessment of the impact of socio-economic background on an individual's outcomes in life. And much broader it is this social mobility index this concept is much broader than just looking at an income equality in income equal inequality you are just comparing the income suppose he is earning 2000 i am earning 3000 this 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 kind of thing is there in case of social mobility every aspect lots of parameters are there we will discuss and uh, what will be taken inflation will be taken suppose you are earning uh, 3000 which is 1000 more than 2000 but in that case the inflation check would be there if the inflation is there then social mobility would be lower the index would be lower in that sense and uh, so uh, let's discuss the parameters and dimensions of this social mob mobility uh, assesses the 82 economies on 10 pillars spread across following five key dimensions of social mobility uh, one dimension is health then education uh, in education, we'd cover access, quality and equity, lifelong learning and technology, work opportunities, wages and conditions. And the last is your protection and institutions, which uh, is uh, social protection and inclusive institutions as well. Top performers. The Nordic uh, nations uh, hold the top five sport, uh, spots, uh, Nordic nations as well as uh, the first is Denmark, first place. Uh, scoring 85 points uh, followed by Norway, Finland and Sweden uh, which are 83 points and Iceland 83 points. Among G7 uh, economies, Germany tops the rank. Among BRICS countries, uh, India is 76th and top is your Russian Federation which is 39th and Russia is followed by China 45th, Brazil 60th and South Africa 77th, India is already 76th, I have mentioned it and India's rank is very very important, please remember from exam point of view and India's overall ranking is poor, 76 out of 82 countries considered it is very bad news for us so what are those findings of the report? Uh, remember that economies that would gain the most from increases in social mobility, uh, in this case China would, would follow uh, US, uh, then India, Japan, Germany and Russia and increasing social mobility by 10% would benefit social cohesion and boost the world's economies by nearly 5% by 2030. So uh, then let's discuss about World Economic Forum which was established in 1971 and located in uh, Cologne which is a uh, municipality uh, in the cantonment of Geneva, Switzerland and it is an independent, impartial and not tied to any special interests and it is an international organization for public-private cooperation. So uh, the reports of uh, World Economic Forum are the Global Risk Report the Global Gender Gap Report, the Global Competitiveness Report. This Global Competitiveness Report was asked in uh, previous year prelims. 
so after that the travel and tourism competitiveness report so please remember these things and let's move to the next issue that is global inequality crisis report so the title uh, was time to care and it is the unpaid and underpaid care work and the global inequality crisis that has been released by oxfam international ahead of 50th annual meeting of the world economic forum so we'll discuss in details about oxfam international in the upcoming slides so let's discuss about this report the report focuses on the alleviation uh, of global poverty so two types of poverty are there you can uh, you know absolute poverty and relative poverty so you might have read economy very well so the report is uh, also states that economic quality inequality is out of control and has created a great divide in the world so uh, now if you consider the number of uh, billionaires the world has 2153 billionaires in uh, 2019 so it shows uh, the uh, high contrast of inequality in case of income uh, and uh, wealth then concentration of wealth where is the concentration of the wealth the world's richest 1% have more than twice as much wealth as 6.9 billion people so you can imagine the kind of inequality prevailing in the world in indian case it is worse actually in the case so uh, unpaid care work this is unpaid care work the monetary value of unpaid care work globally for women aged 15 and over is at least 10.8 trillion dollar annually and this sometimes also known as the barter work and this is it is three time uh, times the size of the world's tech industry this unpaid care work is the hidden engine that keeps the wheels of our economies businesses and societies moving this gender inequality and distribution of wealth globally extreme poverty rates are 4% higher for women than men india's richest 1% hold more than four times the wealth held by bottom 70% of country's population the combined total wealth of 63 indian billionaires is higher than the total union budget of india for the fiscal year 2018 to 19 which was at 24 lakh 42200 crores of rupees this is such an astounding fact so it shows that the inequality level and the uh, you can say that when the inequality is more uh, and in that case the relative poverty would be higher oxfam international this is a group of independent non governmental organizations and formed in 1995 the name oxfam comes from the oxford committee for famine relief founded in britain in 1942 and the secretariat is based in nairobi kenya a mens question of 2017 is like that increased national wealth didn't result in equitable distribution of its benefits it has created only some enclaves of modernity and prosperity for a small minority at the cost of the majority justified so let's move to the next issue that is your npt that is non proliferation treaty why it was in news because iran has want to withdraw from the non proliferation treaty that is npt if the european union nations refer the dispute over its atomic program to the united nations security council iran had signed the jacpova with us uk france germany russia and china in 2015 this jacpova is a joint comprehensive partnership of agreement and uh, that had offered it access to global trade in return for accepting curbs to its atomic program So in 2018 the US unilaterally pulled out of the pact and reimposed sanctions on Iran. Recently the top Iranian general Qasem Soleimani uh, the commander of the Al Quds uh, force of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards corps uh, that is IRGC was assassinated by the US during his visit to Iraq and this has escalated tensions in the international arena. So Uh, this amid rising tensions britain france and germany declared that iran was violating the 2015 pact and have launched a dispute mechanism that would could eventually see the matter referred back to the security council and the reimposition of un sanctions 
then uh, uh, let's discuss in details about this non-proliferation treaty that is NPT. The NPT is an international treaty whose objective is to prevent the spread of nuclear weapon, weapons and weapons technology to foster the peaceful uses of nuclear energy and to further the goal of disarmament. This disarmament is the main object, ob objective of this NPT and it was signed in 1968 and entered into force in 1970. Presently it has 190 member states. It requires countries to give up and present or uh, future plans to build nuclear weapons in return for access to peaceful uses of nuclear energy. It represents the only binding commitment in a multilateral treaty to the goal of disarmament by the nuclear weapon states. Then what is India's stand on NPT? India is the one of the only five countries that either did not sign the NPT or signed but withdrew later. Thus becoming part of the uh, a list that includes Pakistan, Israel, North Korea and South Sudan. Why India did not uh, uh, join NPT because India always considered the NPT as a discriminatory and had refused to sign it. India has opposed the international treaties aimed at non-proliferation since they were se selectively applicable to the non-nuclear powers and legitimized the monopoly of the five nuclear weapons powers. Then the next issue is your Sukhoi 30 MKI. Squadron of the fourth generation fighter jet Sukhoi 30 MKI equipped with the BrahMos missile was inducted in the Southern Air Command uh, which is located in Tanzawar. So in upcoming slides we will discuss about BrahMos missile as well which is a cruise missile and it is the state of the art missile system which has developed by India and is incomparable and it is also known as the Brahmastra. So we will discuss about it. This uh, uh, building of Sukhoi 30 MKI will help India to maintain its air and maritime dominance in the Indian Ocean region. This is Sukhoi 30 jets have been modified to carry BrahMos air to surface missiles giving them the capacity to conduct long range precision strikes. Uh, then integration of Su-30 uh, MKI and BrahMos. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and uh, BrahMos Aerospace Private Limited in 2014 signed a contract to modify two Su-30 MKI aircraft for integrating with the missile. It was for the first time in the world that such a heavyweight missile was integrated on a fighter aircraft. All weather BrahMos give the Sukhoi a combat radius of almost 1500 km without mid-air refueling. BrahMos is the heaviest weapon to be deployed on Su-30 MKI fighter aircraft with a weight of 2.5 tons. Here is your BrahMos missile. So before uh, moving to the BrahMos missile, um, this is a supersonic cruise missile. So we will understand what is this supersonic concept. Remember that the missile uh, speed is uh, calculated on a number that is known as a Mach number. What is this Mach number? It is the ratio of the speed of the object that is the speed of the missile. Okay. So at uh, the same time it is the speed of the sound is considered in that case. So this is your Mach number. So if the Mach number is less than 1 then it is known as subsonic. So and if it is equal to 1 Mach then it is known as sonic and uh, if it is higher than 1 Mach then it is known as supersonic missile or supersonic jets you can say. And if it is more than uh, more than 5 Mach it is known as hypersonic. The hypersonic is the highest speed of missiles. India is trying harder to reach this destination that is hypersonic zone. So uh, and already in uh, yesterday's lecture we have discussed about what is the difference between cruise missile and uh, ballistic missile. So this cruise missile is a dangerous kind of missile. In this case, uh, in this cruise missile case, the when the mis missile is moving at a faster direct, uh, faster, uh, faster speed, then it can change the direction and the precision as well. This is the speciality of this cruise missile. 
So Brahmos is a supersonic cruise missile. So it is a joint venture between DRDO and the NPOM of Russia. This Brahmos is named on the river Brahmaputra and the Moskva. Moskva is located in Russia. And it is a two-stage uh, stage solid propellant engine in the first case uh, and liquid ramjet in second case. And it is air-to-surface missile with a flight range of uh, around 300 km. However, India's entry into this uh, missile technology control regime has extended the range of the BrahMos missile to reach 450 km to 600 km. Uh, BrahMos is a multi-platform that is it can be launched from land, air and sea and multi-capability missile with pinpoint accuracy that works in both day and night irrespective of the weather conditions. And it operates on the fire and forget principle that it doesn't require further guidance after the launch. BrahMos is one of the fastest cruise missiles currently operationally de deployed so with the speed of Mach 2.8. So that's why it is supersonic I have already mentioned. If the Mach is one by more than one Mach, then it is known as supersonic speed. So, and which is three times more than the speed of the sound. The next issue is your Geno boats and uh, scientists in the United States have created the world's first living robots named Geno boats. The tiny robots have been built from the cells of the African clawed frog. Scientists have uh, uh, repurposed living cell, uh, cells scrapped from the frog embryos and assembled them into entirely new life forms. The robots have been named after the species of aquatic frog Genopos lavis found across sub-Saharan Africa from Nigeria and Sudan to South Africa. It is completely biological machines from scratch. There are many useful applications of these living robots including searching out nasty compounds or radioactive contamination, gathering microplastic in the oceans traveling in the arteries to scrap out plague, etc. This genopus is a genus of African frogs that are commonly known as African clawed frogs. Two species of genopus are regularly used by biologists, genopus levis and genopus tropicalis. Both species are fully aquatic and are easy to maintain in uh, captivity. This genopus is a valuable tool because they are hardy, fully aquatic and easy to maintain in the laboratory and produce eggs year around. These eggs are a reliable and flexible material for research. Embryos are a good model for vertebrate uh, development, genetically similar to humans, thus a good model for human disease. The next issue is white rhino. So in this slide we will discuss about northern white rhino, southern white rhino, uh, this uh, Java and Sumatran rhino, all rhinos will discuss. Researchers have created an embryo of the northern white rhino by using in vitro fertilization process. So let's first discuss what is this in vitro fertilization process. Uh, in case of this in vitro fertilization, uh, the uh, egg is uh, fertilized with a, a sperm and it is uh, done in a test tube. So in case of in vivo fertilizations, uh, within the living, this, this fertilization uh, took place. In vivo refers to experimentation being done in a living organism. This in vitro means outside the body and uh, it is done in a test tube. This fertilization means the sperm has attached to an, uh, to an entered the egg. So recently many in vitro fertilization uh, centers are there. Uh, presently, there are only two northern white rhinos in the world. White rhinos are the second largest land mammal after the elephant. White rhinos are also known as the square-lipped rhinoceros due to the square uh, upper lip. The square means not pointed. Two genetically different subspecies exist, the northern and the southern white rhino and are found in two different regions in the Africa. So the IUCN status of the white rhino is near threatened and the IUCN status of the sub subspecies is as follows. Northern white rhino is critically endangered, southern white rhino is near threatened and in case of Javan rhino and Sumatran rhino is critically endangered. So please remember this and there is also a black or a hook-lipped rhinoceros in Africa which is fighting for survival 
and at least three of those subspecies are already extinct. It is critically endangered, that is black or uh, hook lipped rhinoceros. The Indian rhinoceros is different from the African cousins, uh, most prominently in that it has only one hand, it is vulnerable in the IUCN red list. So again I am repeating, northern white rhino is critically endangered, southern white rhino near threatened. Uh, Javan, Sumatran, critically endangered, black or hook lift uh, rhinoceros, critically endangered and, and Indian rhinoceros which is a vulnerable species. So that's it for today. Thank you guys. Have a nice day.